We are in God's house, and the good news is God is in his house, and he's ready to minister to us. I'd like us, uh, Koichi, to just open us in a word of prayer to honor and welcome uh, the Lord. Is Koichi here? Yes. Yeah, yes, thank you. <laughs> Let Sneaked us up. look to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are God Ebenezer. Amen. Thus far, you have helped not only Boon Kiang and family, Amen. you have helped us in our church. Amen. This morning, O oh God, we acknowledge your presence here with us. Help us, we pray, to sense your nearness mm. in all things and in every circumstance, Amen. whether good <coughs> or bad. This morning, we welcome you, the Holy Spirit. You're always welcome here in our midst. Infill us here this morning. Saturate us that we may hear your voice, the still small voice that will speak to us, even as Brother Robin will bring forth your word. Anoint his lips, O oh God, that he shall become your spokesperson, your mouthpiece. Take captive our thoughts, our intellect, our view, our emotions, even as we submit ourselves to you. Have your way amongst us here this morning, O oh God. For we yearn to be like the psalmist who will say, your face is all we shall seek. And we shall fix your, our eyes upon you, the author, the perfecter of our faith. And this we pray, committing ourselves to you, in Jesus' name, and the people of the Lord says, Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Koichi. I am behind the pulpit today to deliver the message but Jesus is in front of the pulpit. Jesus is the one who's speaking to you. He has a word for you. You have come to his house. He has a blessing for you today. And the blessing is God's word. The blessing is God, the bread of life, the, the, the water of life that he's going to give to you. So that's why we acknowledge Jesus Christ in our midst. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is in our midst. The Holy Spirit is sitting beside you. The Holy Spirit is with you. And He is the one who will minister to you today at the very depth and the needs of your heart. The Holy Spirit is here. Today, God has given, uh, the, the church has given me a wonderful passage. I love this passage. And it's in 1 Peter 4, 7 to 11. Can we have the scripture, our text today? To me, this passage summarizes the whole purpose of our Christian life, the reason why God saved us and the means by which he will bring his glory into our presence. As we read this, see if you can see what I mean. First Peter, the Apostle Peter says this, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, Minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. And he ends it by saying that in all things, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Jesus came to free us, to give us new life, to give us new birth. 
through the born-again experience, this glorious new life is for us in the power of the permanent resident of the Holy Spirit in our lives. He came to transform our spirit, soul, and body from verse 7 to verse 11. Verse 7 says, the end of all things is at hand. The verse 7 says, nothing that you see on earth now is permanent. It will come to an end. 145 Marine Parade, this building will come to an end. This is not the church. We are the church of Jesus Christ. Nothing that we can see is permanent. And the purpose of God giving us new birth, sharing with us His life and His Spirit is that we will reach verse 11, which is that we will reach glory. God's purpose is to change us from glory to glory until we are like Jesus Christ. That is His purpose for saving us. That is the purpose of coming to church. That's why we come to church. That's why we belong to church. So that with each and every activity in church, God is transforming us from glory to glory. His purpose is transformation. Transformation. Spiritual transformation that we may be like Him. And He does this through the church. Salvation, the born-again experience is personal, but maturity in Christ is communal, as a community. There is no such thing as a freelance Christian that you can live your Christian life alone by yourself. The maturity, the transformation happens in community, in our church. And that's why this passage is so important for us, because it says we are to pray together, we are to love together, and we are to serve and minister Him and each other together. And when we do these things, that's where the spiritual transformation occurs. That's when we are changed from glory to glory until we are like Jesus. The worst thing anyone can say to you after meeting you for 10 years or 20 years is, Robin, you look exactly the same. That's not a compliment. We should be more and more like Jesus. They should not be able to recognize us like our old self, right? Not you look exactly the same. Because that is God's business. God is in the business of transforming and changing us. Second Corinthians 3 verse 18 says it so clearly. It says, but we, Paul says, but we all are being transformed into the same image of Christ. From glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. And where the Spirit is, there is freedom. There is liberty. He is here to set us free. What does He set us free from? Verse 7 says, He is here to set us free from the temporal things, the visible things, the self-centered things, the fearful things, the vain and meaningless way we exist into an eternal inheritance, into a faith-filled 
Christ-focused adventure of a glorious life in Christ Jesus. This is the lifelong serious business. And Jesus is in this business of transforming us into his likeness. Peter mentions three things. Praying, loving, and serving. Let's talk about it. Praying. It says here, be serious. Be serious, yes. This side. The end of all things, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Why have we got to be serious and watchful? Serious means to be careful, to be earnest, to be focused, to concentrate on something. Watchful means to be alert, to be on the lookout, to be observant, to be vigilant. We have to be serious and watchful in prayer. When we pray, we are acknowledging that God is at work. When we pray, we are acknowledging God's presence. When we pray, we are acknowledging that God is in control, that we are not in control, that the world is not in control of things, that Satan is not in control. When we pray, we are serious to acknowledge that God has won the victory, that he is in control, so that anything that we experience any situation that we are in, we acknowledge that God is in control, that nothing is impossible with him, that he came to deliver us from every bondage and every situation that we are in, that God is fully in control. Jesus is our high priest. When we pray, we are acknowledging that Jesus is our high priest. A very dear sister of mine was praying, uh, who's constantly praying for the church and for the congregation. She said for the last few weeks when she was praying, she saw Jesus in a vision, in his high priestly gown, walking up and down this aisle, and Jesus was carrying a censer, and the censer is with the incense where the high priest comes and receives the prayers of the people and brings it up to God. So Jesus is with us, and he is receiving our prayers the burden of our hearts, the things that are troubling us, the things that weigh us down. Jesus, the high priest, says, bring your prayers to me. And he is interceding before God. The thing about our high priest is this. The high priest intercedes for us, and the high priest accepts the sacrifices of the people and brings it before God and says, God, they have brought their sacrifices for their sins. They are repentant of their sins. Now forgive them of their sins and answer their prayers. That was the Old Testament. In Jesus Christ, our high priest, he is not only our high priest, but he is our sacrifice. Amen? Amen. He is the Lamb of God. He is the sacrifice which God has already prepared for His people. And when we come before Him, and when we acknowledge Him as High Priest and sacrifice, and our sacrifice, our prayers will be effective in His presence. God will bring our prayers to him. Later we will have a time of ministry and prayer 
where you can bring your prayers to Jesus, our high priest, and know that he will answer our prayers. Same sister saw Jesus one hand with the censer, but the other hand holding the menorah. And the menorah is the candle stand with the seven candles, candlesticks. And that speaks of God's presence. God's, that speaks of God's light in the temple. So Jesus is bringing God's presence, God's light in the temple, our high priest. And the menorah grew bigger and bigger, and Jesus planted it right in the center of our church. And that is my prayer, and that should be our prayer too, that the presence of God would come when we congregate, when we trust God and His promise that where two or three are gathered in His name. Each time we gather here, God's presence will be so real. God's presence will be with us that we will leave each and every meeting transformed, having met with Jesus, having encountered Him in His presence and changed. And others will come. We need God's presence in our church, we need God's presence in our life. That when we witness, like Sister Boon Kiang, you know, there's no denial that God answered her prayers, her desperate prayers for her father and for her mother because she carries with her the presence and the witness of God, even as she is declaring to us the amazing love of God. Dear brothers and sisters, we come before God and acknowledge Him as the high priest because this is God's house. This is God's tabernacle. This is God's temple. You cannot come to God's house and not meet with Him. You cannot come to God's house and not experience Him and not encounter him. Jesus is here. When I was praying for our message in our congregation, uh, I was playing with my five grandchildren. And many times when they see me, they'll be running down the passageway and just jumping on top of me. And uh, I have to kneel down to be able to catch them. Right? If not, they'll knock me over. And many times they do knock me over. And that's the picture I have of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is here and he's welcoming us. Every Sunday, he's welcoming us. You know? And he's not just standing, but he's kneeling down, his arms wide open and says, Come, 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 run into me. Run into my arms. God is in the temple, and God's waiting for him to come. Loving God. We have to be serious and watchful in prayer. Watchful, because if not, we'll get distracted. We have to come seriously in prayer and watchful Watchful to know that it's not the speaker on the pulpit for us to judge and criticize his message and think. Watchful that Jesus is the one speaking to us. We have to be watchful that it's not the worship leader that is leading us into worship, but we have to be watchful that it's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that is leading us into his presence. Are we watchful with regards to God's presence in his house? The verse also says, scripture also says, above all things love each other. Why above 
all things, which, which translates into the main thing, the main priority, above all the other things that we are doing in church. Have fervent love for one another. And then it gives you the answer. For love will cover a multitude of sins. It is love that's going to bring about the unity in our church. It is our love for each other that will be the greatest witness on earth. And you know, loving each other is not a principle for us to follow. It is not a formula for us to implement because love is God. Because God is love. The very essence and core of God's being is love. The very center of the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, is love. The very center of the universe is God, and God is love. God is love, and love is a person, and his name is Jesus Christ. When we have Jesus Christ in our hearts, we have the most powerful element in our lives. We have love. And when we love each other with the love of God, that is when we will release the very power of God in our midst. The Holy Communion talks exactly about this. For love covers a multitude of sins. Didn't we just experience it this morning? It is the love of Jesus that has covered our sins. When we partake of the body of Jesus Christ, when we drink of the blood of Jesus Christ, he does exactly that for us. His love is covering a multitude of our sins with his forgiveness, with his love. He reminds us each Sunday as we partake of the Holy Communion, that love will cover a multitude of sins because God is love. I like what Peter puts in verse 9. What has hospitable to one another without grumbling has to do with love, with the serious business of prayer, and with love. Why hospitable? Because hospitality is a character of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ is God's invitation to anyone to embrace and enjoy the hospitality of the grace of God in Jesus Christ. Amen? Our God is a hospitable God. And he asks us to exercise this loving hospitality because hospitality is the expression of God's love. Our church of Singapore was born out of the hospitality of Goyu King 
and his wife in his house. Number eight, Siglap Plain. They opened their house for church. They opened their house for people. And our church was born, the DNA of our church is hospitality. I've met countless Christian leaders around the world that says, my first experience of coming to Singapore was staying in number eight, Sigla Plain, in Brother Go's house. My first experience of church was when they invited me to speak at 145 Marine Parade, your church. And that is my experience. That is our DNA, the hospitality of God. I'm so encouraged last Mission Sunday, Mission Week, when we extended our hospitality, invited all our missionaries and their spouses to come, fully paid, just to have a rest, a retreat, at the church expense. That is what hospitality is about. But we can do more. We can do more. We can do more, much more. Amen. And serving and ministering. We pray for one another. We love one another. And we minister to each other. And you know, it says, to each and every one of us, God has already given a gift to minister to one another as good stewards or trustees or servants of the manifold grace of God. When God distributes his gifts to his people, it is manifold. It is the manifold grace of God. The word manifold appears in the Old Testament when the Joseph was given the multicolored coat. That's the same word. So God's gift is multicolored. God's gift is manifold, many types, all kinds, and each and every one of us has a gift or two to be able to minister to each other. And that's how we move on as a church, as a community, as the people of God on earth when we minister the manifold grace of God among each other and help each other to mature from glory to glory into the fullness of Jesus Christ. Let's be serious and watchful in prayer. Let's love each other fervently with the love of God. And let's be hospitable. Hospitable. Similar word to hospital, but it's totally different. Yeah? <laughs> Hospitable means you love each other, you welcome the person, and you make him feel like family. Not hospitable and diagnose, oh, this person's got this problem, this problem, this problem, and we just minister and then send them off back again. No, we are not, the church is not a hospital. We are just supposed to be exercising to be hospitable. Amen? Dear brothers, we want to just close in prayer. We only got five minutes, 10, 15, then we close in prayer. But we want to minister to each other, right? So let's stand. Let's stand. We ask the music uh, team to come up again so that we can have some time to worship and to be praying for each other. First, Jesus is in our midst. He is the high priest and is calling us. 
if you've come to, to church, if you come to God's house, but you have not known him, you have not accepted him as your Lord, you have not experienced the eternal life that he's giving and offering to you, then come today. Come to Jesus because he is extending his arms and he's saying, come, come home, come back, come to me and receive forgiveness and eternal life.